Recently, I took to Twitter and put forward the question, whose character design should I analyse next? Eggman overwhelmingly tore through the competition, and that's a fight I really would have enjoyed seeing. It's only fitting that I analyse Eggman given the numerous Sonic Focus videos on the channel so far, and like the Blue Hedgehog, the Doctor has been through a crazy amount of redesigns over his years across gaming and other forms of Sonic the Hedgehog media. Originally put together for the sole purpose of replacing Alex Kidd, Sega's previous mascot, Eggman first appeared in his pyjamas and what a friendly looking character he was. Apparently inspired by 26th US President Theodore Roosevelt, this cartoon-like character would go on to be the basis for a character who was much different in tone and would become the villain responsible for numerous environmental crimes in our Hero Sonics universe. It's a simple design that has evolved to provide an excellent amount of high quality character designs over the past decade. I'm the artist Mark Flynn and let's find out which Eggman design I think truly is best. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell if you'd like to help this channel grow. In 1991, Eggman would make his first in-game appearance in the original Sonic the Hedgehog for the Mega Drive. Here, he established himself as the game's lead villain. The artwork surrounding the game highlights his somewhat disturbing features. A round bald head, a large round torso, a red nose and a creepy smile that would put Pennywise to shame. His body and outfit are made up of a number of different curved shapes. Looking closer, I've noticed three places in this outfit where an egg would fit in already. His iconic outfit was also first established here as the villain rocked a red and yellow top, black stretch pants with white gloves and blue glasses. In game his appearance was very similar and his game sprites did a great job of presenting this simple design concept. Funnily enough, while Sonic's sprite work changed a lot from Sonic 1 to 3, Eggman's really didn't. The character's appearance largely looked the same across the main franchise, with seemingly all of the edits going into the machines he would use to combat Sonic and his friends. It's a clear display of how effective the original design was. While his appearance in the games remained the same between versions, in some of the European artwork for games such as Sonic 2, Robotnik, that's how we often dubbed him over here, people are very passionate about this topic, had a goatee, no gloves, and his glasses were replaced by demonic eyebrow definition and dark, cold, empty eyes of death. With a game as popular as Sonic blowing up video games sales charts, it's only natural that other forms of media would follow. 1993 saw the release of not one, but two Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon series that ran alongside each other. There was The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, a comical slapstick cartoon, and on the other end there was the Saturday AM Sonic series which took a slightly more serious tone and had a long running plot to go along with it. Why am I mentioning these differences? Well with the different tone of the shows came two differently different western takes on Robotnik. We'll call him that here, as that's what the shows dub him. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog's Robotnik is quite frankly, revolting. While the original Eggman design was creepy, it was neat and slick. This design however exists to complement the wacky theme of the show, and as a result, Robotnik is presented like a fat clown. His head is more egg-like, moving to a point like a cone head. His moustache is big, ginger and frayed. His rounded body has also been replaced with a physique that is very bottom heavy, his nose and jaw are comically long to persuade some lols from his comical expressions and actions throughout the show. It's a good design which presents him in a Looney Tune style fashion. Did I mention he was revolting? Taking on a completely different vibe, Sat AM's Robotnik is quite frankly terrifying. 
This character wasn't a clown, but he was a serious force to be reckoned with, causing regular destruction to the forest and roboticizing some of Sonic's friends. While his body was still large and egg-like, it was done in a way that made him look imposing, and the combination of his shoulder pads and cape made him feel more authoritative, like a high-ranking member of an evil regime. Playing up to the Robotnik name, he also has a robotic arm, and this makes him feel that bit more dangerous. I remember seeing this and thinking, why does he have this arm? Did Sonic cause him to lose it? Did he do it himself? It's a nice level of mystique for the character. Perhaps one of the most chilling things about this design is his moustache. It's been thinned out and along with his strong facial features, makes him look like someone you really wouldn't want to mess with. I think this is a strong design for many, and while slightly different, it did actually end up returning for a new series in 1999, Sonic Underground, with some subtle differences. The show wasn't very good either. Despite all the shows of this era being tonally quite different, all of the Robotnik designs had some similarities. They all used a modified version of the classic suit, still mixing up red and black whilst implementing this yellow cross pattern. They all featured black eyes and red pupils. They all factored grey into Eggman's colour palette, whether through his gloves, his arms or his legs. And finally, they all clearly presented him with a ginger moustache rather than a brown one. While these designs are quite of their time, they did actually influence a lot of other Sonic media at the time. Merchandise was expected, but it even influenced the video games too. Sonic Spinball was a pinball based Sonic game on the Mega Drive, which released around a similar time as these designs. The in-game bosses were all modelled after Robotnik and for the first time his design did feel quite terrifying. Likely down to the extra detail that had gone into making these large scale sprites. The eventual showdown with him as a final boss is quite chilling due to his giant head and body, Cheshire Cat style grin and his angry expressions. The Mega Drive versions featured this design on the game's box art, a more detailed aggressive looking version of the original design, but when the game re-released for the Game Gear, the box art did actually implement the design from the Adventures cartoon, likely to fit in and cross promote given when the game released. This design would also be used again for its own game. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is one of the most popular versions of the Puyo Puyo puzzle game series. That was fun to say. A game made up entirely of challenges from Robotnik's robotic goons. The character appears in lots of cutscenes and as the game's final boss. He is so based on his TV entry that he even brought a few of the other members of the Adventures cast over with him, such as Scratch, Grounder and even Coconuts. The next big change to Eggman came with the release of the Dreamcast and the first Sonic Adventure title. It was also the first time that Western releases of the game referred to the character under his original Japanese name. Although initially tied to an in-game joke, it became the standard name for the character across the pond from this point onwards. Adventure felt like a more logical evolution of the classic design, his head and body shape were similar, but in a similar sense to Sonic's design evolution in the same game, his design was made longer and taller, with an art style more fitting of the early 2000s. His outfit was also clearly based off of the original, but updated with finer details. His red bodysuit was now a red jacket, this is covered with a number of white stripes on the arms and front, with a similar design also present on his shoes and leggings combo. Yellow details on the suit are now buttons and shirt cuffs, a different use of the same colour palette, while in keeping with the classic design, his glasses are now complemented by a pair of goggles and his moustache that is looking crazier with each instalment. One new detail that I absolutely love is these new buttons at the bottom of his jacket, which appear to be eggs. <laughs> this design has gone on to be used in a massive amount of Sonic titles, the adventure titles established it in 3D, Sonic Advance created the form in pixel art, and Sonic Rush established a 3D polygon style in a 2D setting. One of my favourite implementations of it is in Sonic Pocket Adventure on the Neo Geo. Essentially an updated version of Sonic 2, here Eggman appeared in place of where his classic form would have and he fits the setting really well. The design also appeared in Sonic X, an anime based off of the adventure series, and despite a few moments where his red nose looks significantly more like a conch, he pretty much looks identical here too. Now, 
imagine you take the design that I just mentioned at length and then set out to make it look as realistic as possible. You can imagine the result would be, you know, quite horrifying, right? And that humanity probably doesn't need to see something that would look like... Oh my god, they did it. Realistic Eggman was one of the first things seen in the original Sonic 06 trailer, and his inclusion really does highlight how much companies wanted to push realistic looking games at the time. The result with Eggman was quite unsettling for many, and while I didn't personally mind it and think it's a design very appropriate of a mad scientist, it may have been the ugliest he had ever looked. His costume remained very similar to the design established in Adventure though, and his physique became less egg-like and more like a slightly overweight, realistic aging man. For some strange reason, this look gives me some Spider-Man 2 style Doc Ock vibes, and he fits in as well as he can with what is to me one of the strangest looking, confused Sonic titles of all time. The design hasn't been used since, and I honestly can't say that I'm shocked. This must have given people nightmares. Following 06, Eggman reverted back to a design that better fitted the Sonic universe and his classic character. The same costume details from the previous designs have now been put into a 3D model that has cartoon-like influence, and this would suit the direction that the franchise was heading in. This look has been used frequently since Unleashed, appearing in Colours, Generations, and almost every other game to feature the character since then. It's more of the same costume-wise, but he now has a little bit of Pixar magic applied to him. Obviously, these three designs are very different when you look at them, but what struck me is the amount of similarities between them all too. All of these looks feature incredibly similar costumes and proportions, it's almost as if they drop the same design concept into three different art styles seamlessly. This established outfit was dropped with the release of Sonic Boom, the side series that drastically altered designs of the whole cast. Eggman is definitely a similar character to the main series of video games in Boom, but it's the most the character has changed costume-wise since the character first appeared on the Dreamcast. Here, he dressed much more like a pilot or explorer with his long aviator style coat and separate boots and trousers. It's probably the smartest he's ever looked. His moustache is better groomed, his nose is slightly less red, and his physique? Dude is either wearing a girdle or is straight up the most stacked looking version of Eggman that has been put out there so far. That isn't much of an achievement. In fact, when saying the name Eggman, it's important to note that this is the most the egg elements of his character have actually been downplayed in years. I think this is a really cool design that builds on the character in an innovative way while staying true to the classic staples and colours. It was one of the best things about Boom. If you've visited this channel before, you will know that I've gone into lots of detail on the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie, and specifically the outcry surrounding the design of Sonic in that film. But what do I think of Eggman? Well, I'm mixed. I absolutely love Jim Carrey, but as is, I don't think this is a good design for Robotnik. The trailer does establish his appearance very quickly. He appears with a short dark haircut, a short moustache, and an all-black outfit that doesn't resemble his classic look in the slightest. Did I mention that he is thin and doesn't look like an egg? That seems pretty important. Though, hear me out, he appears to go through a metamorphosis throughout the film. In a later part of the trailer, he makes a switch to the red, and well, there's that end trailer reveal, which highlights a much more classic looking Eggman with the crazy moustache, bald head and goggles. I like to think that this film will literally show us the story of a Dr. Robotnik going through a horrific Jekyll and Hyde style transformation into a Dr. Eggman. This scene is probably the nicest looking part of the trailer, but it doesn't give the full design away. Only time will tell how this design and this film ends up looking. In conclusion, it's actually a really difficult choice for me coming up with a best design for Eggman. I've covered as many of the designs as I could, 
and it's been really fascinating to evaluate how his character has quite literally grown, thinned out and explored numerous artistic styles, some much more appealing than others. But if I had to choose a best design, if I just had to, I'd have to stop somewhere around the middle and pick the design that was first established in the artwork of the Sonic Adventure series. Here, Eggman broke away from being a short, rotund pushover, looking like a more serious villain with a heightened sense of craziness and fashion taste. I love the style of the artwork that presented his new design at the time, as he looks like a more realistic version of what a young artist Mark Flynn imagined he might look like. But at the same time, it doesn't overpush how realistic he should look. While I have a soft spot for the classic look and a current admiration of the design from Boom, I think the design stands out as one that makes him look equally serious, out there and iconic whilst retaining enough of the conventions the original design presented. What do you think? Do you agree with me and are there any designs that you think I should have mentioned? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to check out some of my other design videos whilst you're here. At this time I'd like to thank my patrons who help make videos like this possible, with a special shout out to Top Hat Gaming Man who is donating at the top tier of donations. To help support me and have your name featured at the end of this video, head on over to my Patreon. I'm blood